changes that are allowed to certain buildings is generally governed by the Borough Charter, which is an Australia-wide document. It's been in existence since the late 70s and has gone through two or three changes. It's become a very useful document and it's a very good tool which spells out to conservationists more than anything the approach that should be taken to heritage conservation. So it's not so much what you can and what you can't do, but it, it, it offers a range of considerations that a conservator or restorer ought to take into account. It's a tool that empowers heritage uh, conservators, consultants, to make well-informed decisions based on research. If nothing else, that's what it does. In terms of the other regulatory framework, you would find that um, a lot of the councils have what are called DCPs, which are called Development Control Plans, and they are quite specific and usually related to particular areas. So particular suburbs, particular councils will have a Development Control Plan for an area or a conservation area, and that will normally talk about how the roofs can be changed, how the fences can be changed, what sort of setback these properties should have, if they are going to be changed, what sort of things need to be kept, uh, and, and that's the way in which change to heritage buildings or conservation areas is carried out. So between the Borough Charter, which is a, a, a na nationwide document, and the particular local development control plans, there are always going to be a set of controls which monitor the change of heritage buildings through those regulations. Thank you.